A while back, I did a review of the digital version of the classic Hackle Clone 936 soldering station. And the main differences between the digital and the standard version are that the standard version just has a 24 volt transformer. The digital version has two windings. One is the 10 volt winding for the logic and the uh, other one is the 24 volt AC supply for the heating element. Now, a few of you have said you've been having major problems with these. You've been getting them and they've had weird faults. They've either showed a temperature and the heating element hasn't uh, heated up or they've uh, just shown erroneous temperatures and you haven't been able to sort of find any way of calibrating them in. And uh, Phil Dixon sent me a couple that he'd had. He'd, he bought one, a unit and then got either an exchange unit or an exchange module and neither of them worked. And I... Took a look at these and they arrived, and the, the problem was instantly obvious. These things, as opposed to the original soldering, hold on, I got one here, as opposed to the original units, which have a potentiometer uh, and the uh, socket here, the, well, the plug in this case, and giving two points of attachment onto the case, the front panel. The difference to that is that these ones just have a single point of attachment and it's the connector and it's it's not the really best thing to do and as soon as I got these I thought I wonder if that's the problem and I wiggled it and yeah sure enough you could see the solder connections moving and the, the pads have come off completely on both of them and uh, here's basically what they look like uh, bad soldering for a start but in this case like they've not even completed soldering it's not onto that and also it looks like they've already lifted a pad and then scrubbed some of the uh, resist off and re-soldered onto it. So here's how you can potentially um, resurrect your um, soldering stations if you either have one of these that was delivered faulty or it develops a fault later on. And all you're really going to need here is a bit of wire. In this case, I've got uh, my typical equipment wire and I'm going to put a bridge between each of these solder connections and I'm going to create a new pad by scrubbing here. So I'm just going to zoom in just a little bit. Now, I've already checked. I, I already, already took the, my own circuit board out of this, uh, noting that uh, this is deliberately flowing. They've actually flowed onto the side here to strengthen these pads. That's worth noting. But I've already checked and you can lift it out and leave it in situ and then solder onto it in situ, which would save actually disconnecting all these wires. If you do disconnect the wires, then it's worth noting that they have to be put in the correct uh, colour combination. It doesn't matter which way round they go, uh, as long as you've got the, well, in this case, certainly it's two yellow ones down for the heating circuit, and then the two blue ones for the, uh, the logic circuit. Uh, the logic circuit is, incidentally, it's the low voltage winding. One connection is used as the reference to ground, then the other connection, it's quite odd, goes through two diodes to two separate capacitors and voltage regulators. While the heating element uh, connection goes uh, down to one terminal of the, of the heater in the soldering iron, another one goes via this triac here, these three connections here, and then goes to the heater, and then there's a resistor and an opto isolator so that that can be controlled from the circuitry without any direct need to reference to the uh, yellow connections here. There's also this uh, earth wire that goes on at the bottom, and that's just to uh, make sure the tip of the iron is effectively referenced to ground. It just means that if, if you have a ground connection, then that uh, means that any voltage leakage in the iron will be taken to ground and it protects delicate electronics. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to make new pads a modest distance from the original one. So I'm just going to scrub this to cut through the solder resist until I've got a modest sort of clean bit of copper. And this, uh, this is quite tough, and this solder, this uh, screwdriver is not the sharpest because it's seen a lot of uh, abuse. So I'm just going to scrub some new pads. It's strange, you know, that this has happened in the first place. It, it should have been obvious that this was uh, a problem, but uh, it's, they've not seemed to really address that sensibly. It would have been nice they just actually mounted some extra spacers on the panel some physical hardware. They do have another little uh, spacer on the back of this, but all it is, it's a little standoff uh, there, and it doesn't really do much. Uh, it's, this matches up with this hole. They could have put a screw in, I suppose. But even then, it's not. it doesn't seem... It's even a different... It, it seems too long. It's, it's just wrong. 
basically. And when you sit this in, uh, the front panel sits into a groove in the case and the circuit board sits into this panel behind, so it's all... Yeah, it's not a great, great idea. But we can fix it. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to float fresh solder onto these pads I've made. And then I'm going to flow some more solder on to the existing connections. I'm going to have to be careful not to uh, change the spacing too much, although to be honest, I don't think that would actually do any harm at all. Uh, because I don't, I think these may have been pushed through too far already. Hmm, it's not great. So I'm going to flow fresh solder on, not onto the pads, I'm just purely onto the connections of the connector itself. And I'm using lead-based solder as I always do, just because it's better solder to work with, it's more flexible. That may also be a part of the factor here. And I'm going to tin my solid core wire, and I'm going to connect one end of that tinned wire onto the original uh, connector pad, the terminal coming through. Let it cool down, and then I'm going to press that against the circuit board, curve it up slightly, and then I'm going to flow some solder on. I'm just going to wipe the solder on first. I'm going to flow some solder on to here, and the new pad. So effectively now, I've created a new fairly robust printed circuit board track that goes directly onto that, one that's going to give it a little bit of give. So I'm going to crop that down. I'm going to repeat that all the way around for the others. So, tinning the wire. This is a fix that won't really take that long, but the annoying thing is, if you've bought this as your only iron, then unfortunately, uh, you've got nothing to do it with. You're going to have to get a friend to do it for you or borrow their iron or something like that. That's not the best connection. I think I could do better than that. I've put that right up on top of that connector. I think I'll put it slightly to the side. Said Clive, putting it more or less where he had it before just because that's where it ends up coming. Oh well, so be it. Where you've got uh, circuit boards with mechanical components attached to them with fairly heavy set of connections, it's a really common problem that you do get broken solder joints in that area. So that's something you should always check for if you uh, reckon that may be something that's causing a problem. All you have to do is look at them very closely while you actually rock it backwards and forwards and you'll generally see the movement. Uh, and if there is any movement, it suggests that Either the solder connection is broken or the tracks, the pad's been lifted off the circuit board, which is fairly common as well. In many old pieces of electrical equipment, uh, just reflowing larger connections can solve a lot of problems. So this shouldn't take too long. This is the probably the negative rail on the logic side. Yes, it is. And the thermocouple will be generating a very small voltage between this connection and that connection there, which then gets buffered up through some circuitry and what I'm guessing is an op amp here. An operational amplifier or comparator. Very similar functionality. It basically, you set a voltage on one pin and uh, it... Uh, amplifies the signal. Well, you can either use it as an amplifier, which it's probably doing here, or you can set a, a voltage on one pin and when the other pin reaches that voltage, it changes logic state. I'm looking at this. Uh, have I actually splashed them? Yes, I have. Glad I picked that up. Uh, so, yeah, let's uh, do this connection. What I'm going to do after this, I'm also going to do it with my own, uh, the one I've got already, because that means it's kind of future-proofing it. It's going to avoid that problem happening in the future. Because all it would theoretically take is plugging in a new iron into it could actually... Oh, I've overheated that and it's just popped off both connections. Kind of glad that happened. It shows what can happen. That's why when you make your new 
uh, pad on the circuit board by scrubbing away some solder resist, do it a modest distance away from the uh, original solder connections so that it, you can you get a modest length of time to actually heat that. Watch, I'll probably do it again because uh, uh, this is fairly close, isn't it? That'll do. And that just leaves the earth connection. So this earth connection, it's, it's one of these things that if the ground connection here wasn't making a connection at all, the, the, your soldering station would still work. But there's a risk that the tip of the iron could float up. If something went wrong with the heating element, it could potentially float up to uh, a modest voltage with respect to ground, theoretically. Not really in, in a majorly bad way, but uh, it's better to just do this one anyway, just to, as a, to make sure that the ground has con continuity. I just prefer soldier irons with grounded tips if they're mains operated or powered by a power supply. In this case it's less critical because it is a traditional old fashioned old school low frequency transformer. It's not like the switchboard power supply transformers that tend to couple quite a lot of current across. Other things worth noting here. The alignment of these switches. If they're not aligned correctly, they will, if the circuit board isn't perfectly aligned, they, they will sometimes not click like this. They're supposed to click. If it's out of alignment, it will it will jam them. Basically, they're rubbing against the side of this plastic and it will stop them operating. So they should be nice and clicky. So let's get uh, these wires off now and we'll solder it into this station. Uh, I'll zoom back out again for this. Um, solder, solder, solder. Where have we put the solder? There's my solder. So let's get these original wires off. Noting that you have to put the two blue ones, either either way round, but the two blue ones have to go onto these two upper pads and the two yellow ones have to go onto the lower pads because uh, they're different voltages. The blue ones are about 10 volts AC and the yellow ones, in this case, are 24 volts. And this is where I might struggle to get this out because, ah, that's out. That's fine. So let's uh, touch them up with a little bit of fresh, juicy, lead-based soda. It's kind of ironic that when they banned lead from soda, um, at that time, suddenly the amount of soda that was in electronic circuitry reduced anyway, because of surface amount. So it's not making that huge an impact, well, apart from the amount of landfill that it's caused. So let's uh, bring this unit in here now. And uh, instead of trying to get the earth wire up underneath, because it's a temporary connection, uh, I'm just going to solder it on the circuit board side. And the other one's solder onto the circuit board side anyway. Let's uh, turn this over. Oh, it's not going to reach, is it? All right, I'm just going to have to improvise. So the two yellow ones are the heating element. Power supply, the 24 volts for that. If you swapped out the electronic module for one of the more traditional uh, knob type modules, all you do is tape up the, the two uh, 10 volt connections. They're not needed. All you need is the 24 volt connection because the standard uh, rotary knob based ones, the standard linear style uh, soldier irons, they don't need the logic level signal. They just derive their logic, their, their control circuitry power from the 24 volts. In this case, the digital readout uh, requires a modest amount of current, so the, it's sensible to use it at a, lower, at a lower voltage for reducing dissipation. So let's pop this in here and see if that has solved all the problems. I'm going to pop the lid on loosely while I do this, just so I don't smack my fingers in the live bits, which wouldn't be very good. Amusing for you guys, but not amusing for me. Owing to the fact that electricity has this really annoying habit of hurting. Uh, right, okay, that's kind of, yeah, that's kind of going together. Right, that'll do. Okay, so I'm going to get the soldering stick iron up. And I'm going to plug it into that. The 
this is where uh, not, I probably need to focus down onto this now. Is that better? I think it is. Let's plug it in and see what happens. This might go horribly wrong. Says the temperature is, hmm, what's it aiming at? It's working. It's going quite high. Let's, uh, let's nudge that down to uh, closer to where I prefer to work. 330, say. Keep in mind this one won't be calibrated. That circuit board isn't clamped in properly because it's uh, it's not lined up in there. That's why it wasn't going together so easily. 330? Okay. Right. Uh, so that soldier iron should be coming up to that temperature. Or down to that temperature since it may have already gone overshot that while before I reset it a bit. So let's... Uh, Turn this on, let's get a bit of solder in that and see how this is faring. It might not be fully up to temperature yet. There's a sort of time delay between the heating element actually transferring the heat to the outer area, but it should give us a rough indication. We're looking for around about 300. Yeah, 310. So it's about. Yeah, that's pretty good actually. It's about 15 degrees out from. Uh, where we're looking for, which means that it, for calibration, it theoretically, let's see how that's doing. It's close, it's very close. If anything, that's actually just about perfect, isn't it? I would say that's perfect. So, yeah, that circuit board's working. Uh, I, I, all I need to do now is fix this circuit board with the same thing, and then I'll give mine a quick makeover, and that's the problem so solved. So, that does appear to be the issue. How annoying that uh, it's all down to these uh, solder connections onto this connector. Yeah, that's that's a bit frustrating. But uh, if you have one of these irons and you've had a problem, then this is how you may be able to fix it.